in three, two. Welcome back everybody for another episode of the Quick Fire Five. Today we have productivity coach, author, speaker, Mrithu Parikh. She is a, an expert in organization and just getting shit done on a day-to-day -day basis. So Mrithu, welcome to the Quick Fire Five. Dory, I'm so excited to be here. Let's go. Oh, when I saw that you were coming on, I was elated. And I just love that you also say, AKA the stress squasher. <laughs> For sure. Isn't that what we're all feeling these days? It's like complete stress and overwhelm. It's like, it's like an epidemic, I think. It is. So I'm really hoping by the time we're done with our quick fire five, the stress is squashed. And, uh, you know, where we are putting a smile on our face and feeling inspired. But first, before you get to pitch your episode for next week, we've got a couple fun questions to ask. I can't wait to hear your answers. So you ready to get started? I'm ready. All right. Question number one, what was a life lesson you learned from the pandemic? Okay, this, this is kind of a two-parter. So I learned that I was more introverted than I thought. Like I thought I was so extroverted, but then once I was home, I really enjoyed being home. And I was like, oh, I kind of, I don't have to be out all the time. But the second lesson in that was that I also realized after a year and a half of being home so much, it really turned into a complacency. And so I kind of had to get myself back out and really make, you know, an effort to get out there again. And I love it, but I, I do think it was something you could fall sort of like into that comfort zone of it. You know, I hear, I hear that a lot, the complacency. I think you just, I think a lot of people out there listening probably completely relate to that. So great, great answer. We're going to move on to question number two. This is where we get a little more fun. If you could be a character in any movie, what character would you be? Okay. So I didn't pick a movie. I picked a show. <laughs> we'll take that. We'll take that. <laughs> but um, are you familiar with Parks and Rec? Yes. Okay. So Leslie Nope from mm -hmm. there, um, because she has so much energy and so much enthusiasm and so much optimism for everything that she does in her world and in her job. She loves it so much and she loves her, you know, her town. And I just think that's just an amazing place to be like that passionate and um, just that dedicated to what you do. Please tell me you're also an office fan as well. Oh, de definitely. For sure. I feel like they go hand in hand. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You're going to complete this statement on Sunday mornings. You will find me having my coffee, sitting on the couch. And then around 11 o'clock, I go to my favorite Zumba class once a week. It's like my entire Sunday is scheduled around this class. because I love her so much. All right. Well, hats off to the couch sitters. I'm the couch sitter and I rarely get a couch sitter on that answer. So whoop, whoop for the couch That's sitter. <laughs> All right, here we go. Love for you to recommend a book to our FBP family. So one of my newest favorite, like favorite newest books rather, is called No One Succeeds Alone by Robert Refkin. I don't feel like it's that well known yet, but it is so good. He is the founder of Compass Real Estate, but he's just, it's a fascinating, really motivating story. All right. We'll have to check that one out. All right. Are you ready? Here is your 30 second elevator pitch to encourage all of our listeners out there to come back next week for your episode. Take it away. All right. If you're listening, uh, there's a good chance that you are on information overload, right? There's so many demands and so many distractions thrown your way 24 seven, and you need a really simple way to handle them all. And yeah, simple is the key, it's like nothing complicated. So that's why you should join next week. I'll be dropping some really simple and doable practical tips and strategies on how to take control of your time and everything on your ever growing to-do list. All right, everybody. Mithru Parikh is coming back next week to talk about time management. See you guys all next week. Okay. Hey, awesome. great job. Okay. Okay. You just said something there. You said expert, and I like that expert tips and strategy. That's what it was. I'm because I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to change your title to expert tips and strategy, expert tips and strategies for productivity, for productivity, for productivity. Yeah. Are you good with that? Are you comfortable? That's fine. Yep. 
Okay. Expert tips and strategies for productivity. I like that. I think that's a nice ring. All right. So now we're going to launch into the main interview. 18, 20 minutes, somewhere okay. around there. We are at 515. I think you're in my time okay. zone, right? I'm 415. But um, but I'm in, that's because I'm in Nashville. But I have a New York number, oh, so I don't know. That's how they okay. threw you off. Yeah. Um, You're an hour so, so so for you want to wrap it up like 4:30, 20 minutes. You said right? Yeah, you 20 no, minutes. 18, 18 minutes. 18 okay. to 20 minutes max. Okay. Um, and that includes those last questions or just the just this part? Okay. Yeah. Are you are you good with talking? No, oh no, that's great. I just want to. Okay. I, I can sometimes talk too much, so that's good. I want to. I want to know when to when to stop. So that's good. Okay. Yeah. I always tell everybody try to um, be mindful just of the time. Yeah. So because I really want to get through all the questions, and sometimes we only get through question two, and we're at twenty minutes, and I'm like, right. so yeah. Okay. yeah, fantastic. All right, here we go. Let's get started. Um, yeah, let's count it down. Here we go. In three, two, welcome back for another episode at the Fitness Business Podcast. I'm your host, Dory Nugent. And today we have Mithru Parikh. You're like, okay, who's Mithru Parikh? Well, she wears a lot of hats. First and foremost, she is a productivity coach. Second of all, she's an author. Third, she's a speaker. She's everything. She's amazing. And she is here to talk to us and give us expert tips and strategies for productivity. Mithra, welcome to the Fitness Business Podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I need to just listen to that intro every day. That was so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I saw that you were coming on. And I'm, honestly, this is one of my favorite topics because I know it's my weakness. Uh, if anybody asks me in an interview, what's your strengths, what your weakness is, I raise my hand on productivity, procrastination. I want to get a lot done. I'm motivated to get a lot done, but sometimes I just feel like I'm busy, but it equals nothing. So I'm so glad you're here. I love the fact that you call yourself or dubbed yourself the stress squasher. Yeah, I think uh, we're all really stressed these days, feeling really overwhelmed, sort of just overstretched and pulled in so many directions. But the good news is you're not the only one who feels like that. We said, you know, productivity is a weakness. There is a way out. There are things that can be learned for sure. Well, I just feel like after this episode, I'm going to be a whole new gal. So I'm pretty excited. <laughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, there we go there. I already messed up. Sorry. Okay. Oh, God. All right. Let's pick it up. So I okay. said it's going to be a whole new gown. Okay. Okay. All right, Mithru, are you ready to get, ex okay. Mithru, are you ready to get started? I am totally ready. Let's go. All right. Here we go. First question, perhaps one of the most asked for self-development course is time management. Everybody's always like, time management, time management. They even ask us all the time, can you have more topics on time management? So can we ever, here's the question, can we ever truly manage our time? I'm so glad you asked this because I believe that managing time is sort of a fallacy. It's not really what we need to manage. And that sounds so counterintuitive, right? You're right, because you're always here about time management. But as we all know, and I know people have heard this, but we all have the same amount of time, right? And we all know that person who gets a hundred things done and seems to have it all together. And then there's someone else. And sometimes we feel like it's ourselves and we have the same amount of time. We're like, what did I get done? None of it, right? So it's not really managing your time as much as manage your priorities. So I think if we made that shift and called it priority management, that would be a lot better because that immediately signals to you, oh, okay, I should be thinking about what are my most important things to get done for the day? What are the most important tasks? What are my goals? And it just puts a shift from to, sorry, just puts a shift. God, I really am messing up today. As I say, I never mess up, but I don't know what's happening. I am so sorry. We just hit delete. I don't, I don't know what's <laughs> happened. I'm just going to like. Look at me. I do it all I time. That's I, why I it's because you said it. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to mess up every time. Right. Law of sorry. attraction. Okay. We attracted yeah. mess ups today. God. Pick it back okay. up. Go ahead. Whenever you're ready. Okay. So it's really about time. I did it again. Forget it. Okay. So it's really about managing your tasks versus managing your time. Okay. You were finishing there. Sorry. Yeah. yeah that's the part I want that I kept messing up and saying time. I don't know what I'm saying. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Where do I, I want to go with something with managed priorities. Just give me a second. Sure. Um, 
Okay, so we no longer talk about time management, we just talk about managing priorities. I like that. So when you talk about managing priorities, are you really kind of telling us to make a list every day of our pri- of our priority of what we need to get done? Yes and no, because here's the thing. So let's say you have the list, right? We all have the list. It's this long to-do list and we have like 40 things, if that, you know, at least that much every day. And you know, you have those days when you are running around like a crazy person from the morning to night and you're checking everything off the list. You're doing all the things. And yet at the end of the day, you look around and you're like, what did I get done today? I got nothing done, right? So yes, there is a list is important, but it's really how we prioritize what's on that list because that's where we don't want to be. And we all have those days, right? We're doing all the things, but like, I feel like I got nothing done. So instead you want to take that list. That's a great place to start but say, okay, what are the ones that are going to move me towards my goals every day? Whether it's for my business, whether it's personally, whether it's for relationships, whether it's for, you know, my community, like whatever that might be, that's something that really moves the needle. So it's typically not getting caught up in our email or getting on social media or getting on the, you know, on texts and phone calls. There's typically things that require more relationship building or something that's a little bit scary that you don't want to do, like making that important phone call or reaching out or making that video or, you know, something that scares you a little bit or that you're procrastinating. Those are the things that even if you get like 10 other, you know, random tasks done, those are the ones at the end of the day, you're like, oh, I got something done today. Like I moved forward. I push the needle on my goals every day. And so that's really important to think about when we're thinking about priorities. What are the things that make you feel really good. I'm going to jump maybe a little bit ahead here, but I feel like this, the way that I define productivity is a little bit unique because I feel that it's an emotion you feel when you get the results you want with less time and less effort. So it doesn't matter how hard you're working because we all work hard, right? It's how do you feel at the end of the day about what you got done? Yeah. So I'm just sitting here listening and it just relates to me so much because Um, you know, I work a full-time job. I do the podcast. I have a family. I have a dog and yeah, there's never a day where I don't have anything to do, but there are many, many nights that I sit down on the couch and I'm just like, I still feel like the list is overwhelming. And then it just pushes into the next day. And then, you know, I already had things lined up for a Tuesday and now the Monday things just pushed into the Tuesday. And now I feel like I've got double the list. And then it just gets me like, anxious. And then I feel like nothing gets done like thoroughly. It's always kind of just like, okay, how quickly can I get it done? How quickly can I get it done? So I I love that we're talking about this then. I can't wait taking lots of notes here so I can have some good takeaways. Yeah. You know, you're not the only one. I feel like business owners, especially we feel like in order to be successful, we have to do more doing, right? Like do, do, do all day, do more, do more, do more. When there's more being thrown at me, if I just put my head down and get it done, I'll feel better. But The truth is, as a business owner, if you want to be successful, what you really have to do is more planning. We've got to step away from this doing mentality and move into the planning mentality. And that's how you're really going to feel successful, right? So instead of looking, like you said, that list of 40 things or 50 things or 100 things, let's plan out the three or five that I'm actually going to accomplish today, right? Because at the end of the day, if we want to feel good, the way we feel good is to accomplish what we set out to do. So if we got a hundred things on the list, we're never going to feel good because we're never going to get through that. If you got three or five, you finish three or five, you're going to feel really good each day. So planning out in like those small pieces of small tasks is way more productive and makes you feel so much more rewarded than just scattering and running around and multitasking and just re- re- reacting and responding to like the, you know, a little bit here and there, all the different things on your list. I know I hate having that one thing on my list that I really don't want to do because I don't like to do it, or I know it's going to be a hard phone call to make or have a hard conversation with somebody. And so it's like, you keep pushing that off. And it's funny because for me, I could get all the other tasks on the to-do list checked off. But if I can't check the hardest one off, it weighs on me. Do you ever hear that anybody else says that? Oh, definitely, definitely. And so you may have heard, there's a few tips with this. So sometimes people say, you know, get the worst thing done first, like eat your frog first, right? Like get it over with because everything after that is more pleasurable, right? Everything after that doesn't seem so bad. So that's something I would recommend, but hey, we're human. I mean, I say this to myself too. Let me just do it first thing. And then whatever, noon rolls around and three o'clock rolls around. It doesn't, but I will tell you, 
I really try hard though, even if it's 430 to get that thing done. And so as long as I'm like, I'll get it done by the end of the day, even if it's at the very end of the day before I'm like switching back into mom mode, I get it. I try to get that done. And then I feel so great. So yeah, ideally I'd love to do it in the morning. Doesn't always happen, but if I know it's off my list before, like my head hits the pillow, it's, it's awesome. So eat your frog first. Is that something that you created or did I, am I missing this um, cute little quote right there? Oh no, I did not. I'm trying to remember who, oh, gosh, I can't remember. I can't remember who it is, but it's, it's sort of, I guess, famous in the, in the time management world is like, eat your frog first. It's a book. You can look it up. Anyone can look it up, but it's essentially that it's like, do the toughest thing first. And then everything after, so it's like, eat your frog. Like who wants to eat the frog first thing? You, you, be done with that. And then everything after that is like easy peasy or easier. All right. I think I need to write that down and like paste it up, you know, right in front of me. I love that. It's awesome. So great advice so far. I'd like to just uh, move on and ask you, how do you get yourself back on track when you have a day or a week that just completely goes haywire? So the first thing I will tell you, it comes sort of back to that planning. And the thing you want to do is very counterintuitive to what you really want to do. So again, when everything's being thrown at you, you're totally off track, you're you know, overwhelmed, we want to jump into doing mode. You're like, let me just do the easiest thing that I can and get it done. But I recommend the first thing you do is you empty your brain. You just brain dump every single thing that's on your mind, everything that woke you up at 3 a.m. in the morning, everything you got to do for the next day, everything with your kids, everything with your business, everything, your everything, right? And you just start making your list and you actually write it down. You can type it out, write it out, whatever. You want to actually get this out of your head. And there's a lot of reasons for this. It is really, really, really challenging for us to effectively prioritize when everything is stuck in our head. Like we think we can do it. It, it feels like we're adults. We should be able to figure that out. And we can't. You can't remember it all. Something's always going to fall through the cracks. You're worried I'm going to miss something. And then we start just attaching ourselves to the wrong things, right? Not the things that are going to make a big impact because you're like, it's just easy to do. Let me just do it. Or it's the first thing that came to my mind. When you actually write it all out, it's like this big aha. I mean, on one hand, it's overwhelming. So you're like, oh, no wonder I'm so overwhelmed. I have like 8,000 things on my mind. But on the other hand, you can make decisions so much more effectively because you're looking at it and you're like, oh, wait a second. That is so not important right now. I could do that one later. This one really, oh, wait, now that I, now that I actually see it on paper, this is like a deadline. This is due in two days. I got to start working on this now or, you know, and you can just, it's just like the pieces of the puzzle come together. So it's the most basic strategy in the world, but take, step back, don't do, step back, write it all out and then pick your top priorities. Mm, good advice. That's, I like that a lot. So I like how you just talk about empty your brain. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about empty your brain, what's the best advice on how to empty your brain? Cause I hear a lot of people say, oh, it's just, you know, my mind is racing and I, I'm, I have so much to do. I don't even know where to start. Yes. Yeah. And that's part of that, that cathartic feeling of getting it all out of your brain, but I would categorize. So that's how I do it. So I will kind of think of things and projects in my life. So I'm like, okay, here's everything I got to do for home. And then I'll break that down. Here's everything I do for my kids today. Here's all the groceries I got to get. Here's the errands I want to run for business. Oh, here's my marketing things. Here are the emails I've got to do. Here's the calls I have to return it. And I literally just make these sort of categories as I'm creating that list, because sometimes we'd have the one to-do list. Again, it's out of your head, but you have 400 things on one list. It's not helpful, right? It's just like, this is even worse than having it in my head. So if you can categorize them, then it's like, okay, I have an hour or two today. Let me just do something that I'm going to make an impact on, on, on my marketing or, you know, or on my podcast today or with my client or, or something for my, for my home or for my kids or for my relationships or for my health. And so when you have them all categorized like that, it's a much more organized way for you to see it. And like, again, prioritize more effectively. What do you think is the number one thing that holds people back from reaching their goals, even though they think they're working really hard? What, what's the one thing that you would say as the expert today? Is that we are living in a complete reactivity mode all the time, right? We are constantly multitasking, scattered, like overwhelmed, just, just respond, respond. Yes, is phone, text, email, well, phone, someone walking in. I mean, it's just interruptions. It's just like, that is just the way it, we operate now. I think it's just this terrible habit and it's just this com compounding effect on our energy, 
on our clarity, on our presence, on our creativity. It just is draining. It drains you. And I don't even know that we realize it's happening anymore because it's become such a common way of, of our lives. Uh, but that is by far the number one reason. If you end the day, you don't feel like I got anything done. If you're not feeling productive, if you're not hitting your goals or you're not reaching them fast enough, that is what it is. And so it's like this constant multitasking. So I would say that a goal for all of us, everybody listening, is that don't try to go from, okay, uh, I'm, I'm multitasking, I'm reacting every two or three minutes, right? Like a text to an email. To, don't try to go from that to, I'm going to focus for four, for, for four hours now or for the next three hours. Like it's unrealistic. It's not going to happen. It's too big. So let's just train ourselves to go from a two or three minutes of being interrupted and disrupted. Let's extend that to 15 or 20 minutes of focus time. You know, like make, make it doable, practical, practical, small. And, but those small periods, those 15, 20, 25, even 30 minutes of completely focused 100% on the one task is so rewarding. You won't even know how much you are capable of getting done because it's probably been so long that you've been focused for that long. So start there, kind of let's start retraining our brain, retraining our muscles and feel confident that we can be focused again, you know, just for like these, these 20 minutes of time, use it, use a timer. It's a big uh, tool I say I use all the time is use a timer, put on a 20 minute timer and say, I'm just going to focus, put the stuff away, the, the other phone, turn off the email and let me just do my thing, whatever it is for 15 or 20 minutes. I love that. I, that's a great tip that I can certainly take away and that's setting a timer because, you know, I sit at a desk a lot, whether I'm podcasting or, or, um, you know, doing my other job, I sit at a desk a lot. And I find that sometimes that doesn't suit me well, because I, I get too like, all right, I'm kind of bored. So now I'm going to do this. And okay, now I looked at emails and yeah, I'm going to text and wait, what was that thing on my phone? Oh, let me look. Oh, there's somebody posted something on social media. And the next thing you know, that 15, 20 minutes that you're saying that we should try to stay focused, I've probably switched to four different avenues to phone, to email, to social media. Yeah. And it's so frustrating because earlier, earlier in our conversation, you mentioned something like, I never finished what I'm doing. And that's so frustrating, right? Because it's just, if we just stay focused that 15 minutes, we probably could have finished that one email or that one task or that one thing. And so it's very defeating. It's very defeating to end the day feeling like I didn't finish anything, you know, or I only finished a couple things. So why not let's, if we can stay more focused and finish the five or finish six or finish eight things, it's so much, it's just so much more rewarding and more motivating than, oh, I just touched a little bit of 20 different things. Yeah. So be, I love the idea of setting the timer. So, you know, 15, 20 minutes, we all have the timer on our phone. Do you have any other tips or advice on getting focused? Yes. So I'd say, actually, I'm going to show you, I'm keep looking over. I know we're on video and audio, but I will explain this for anybody on audio, but I have my little time. So this is a cube. It's called a cube timer. And for your listening, it's literally, you can go on Amazon and put in cube timer and it has on six sides, it has different numbers like 15, 10, 25, five. And this one's just out of battery, right? This minute I'd show you, but basically if you're like, I just want to focus for 15 minutes, you just put it down on 15, turn on, and it will then buzz after 15. Or I, I want to focus for 30 minutes. You put on 30, you put it on the five side. And why that's so great is because we'll even get distracted. How often does this happen, Dory? That you're like, I'm going to go put on, maybe I'll put on my timer but then you get on your phone and then five other texts come in and then Instagram is there and about, you know, all the things. And so I think trying to do anything like with the phone to keep you focused is totally not going to work. It's like two opposing things. So look up this cube timer. It's so easy. It's so great. So that's one. Um, two, if we have a cup, one more minute, I'll, I'll wrap it up, but just, uh, you know, turn off the notifications. Oh, well, research shows we have on average, 120 emails a day on average. So some of you are laughing at that. Like I get over 200 or some of you are like, oh my gosh, is it that much? But if you still have your notifications coming up on your phone, on your watch, on your iPad, on your laptop, whatever, you are allowing yourself to get distracted at minimum a hundred times a day. Like when we think about that number, that's crazy. So just turn off those like types of notifications that are constantly coming up. That's not even including social media and the news and all the other stuff but you are allowing yourself to get distracted hundreds of times a day. And how are we ever going to get focused on, right? And how are we ever going to feel successful? 
And if you're worried that if you turn off the notifications, you're not going to check your email or your social, just try it for a day. I guarantee you're still going to check it 27 times. <laughs> you're not going to forget about it. We are not going to forget. So just try this out and see how it goes. All right. So we have the traditional timer on the phone. And then we also have this cube timer that you said yeah. can be found if we just put in cube timer on Amazon. Yep. Um, for those out there listening that can't see what's going on right now, just Google it if you're as long as you're not driving and uh, check it out. But uh, yeah, you can also head here to the the video that we usually put up on YouTube and see what the cube timer looks like. It's pretty cool. So I like that. So great advice. Thank you so much. I mean, I honestly think we probably could sit here and talk about this for two hours. Um, it's such a great topic. And I think it's so relatable. Um, even those people that I'm jealous of that seem so focused. I'm sure they even sometimes feel as if, you know, they're busy getting nothing done. Oh, I teach this and I say, I could hear this every single day. Like I have to pull myself out of it all the time. I think I've just trained myself enough that I can, that I can, like I can pull myself back and get on track, but I get off track, you know, just like everybody else. So, yeah. so tell us a little bit, you authored a book. I'd love for you to tell our audience about your book. Sure. Uh, the book is called Accomplish It, and it's for busy, typically busy women with uh, growing businesses, growing families who are feeling overwhelmed by all their demands and distractions. And I just give them seven really simple strategies on how to stop drowning and start commanding their time and energy in their business and at home. Yeah. And you also, besides being an author, you have this beautiful website and your business is called Life is Organized. So it's lifeisorganized.com. Uh, you can find all the things there. You can find free training resources, my podcast, which is productivity on purpose. Everything's there. That's probably the best way to connect if you want to learn more. Yeah. I saw that you have a free training. Could you tell our listeners about the free training? Sure. It is called, I think you get to it right now. Sorry, I'm going <laughs> to say that again. I actually can't remember because it's so long. So I'm going to get to that. Okay. Sorry. Is that all right that I ask you? Or yeah, no, you I'm so glad you did. I just, it's just such a long, I was like, I don't remember exactly what it's called. So I'm right on it now. Okay. I'll pick it up from here. Sure. It's called turn your scattered week into a structure you can stick to for women business owners who look put together, but don't feel that way. Okay. That's me. I'll be signing up for that. Yeah. It's, I, I hope you enjoy it. It's uh, really takes you through just how to plan your week how to feel successful, how to be productive, and how to really focus on the things that matter most to you. All right. So any of our FBP family out there, if you want to take this free course with me, let me know. We can take it together. We could have like, instead of like book club, we could have like free workshop club, get together like once a week and talk about it. Be pretty cool. I think that's that would be plan. very cool. <laughs> well, Mithra, thank you so, so much for coming on first time on the Fitness Business Podcast. Thank you so much for having me. You are awesome. And this was so much fun. Oh, we love it. We, we love, we like try to have a good time here at, at the podcast. So thank you again. We enjoyed all of your expert tips and advice and strategy for productivity. All right. Fantastic. That went by so quickly. I looked at my walk. I like, was like, oh my God, I'll wrap it up right now. So I'm sorry. Like, we went over, but we'll, we'll be all right. Okay. So now we're going to do our fits inspiration question. Okay. That is a sponsored question for us. So here's how it's going to, here is how it is going to work. I'm just going to ask you the question and then you're going to give your three tips for boosting personal productivity. It can be new tips. It can be tips that you already mentioned. It doesn't matter, you know, whatever you want to, however you want to answer, um, just give the three tips. When you're done with your three tips, pause. So I know that it is over. There's no follow-up question after the segment. Okay, great. Okay, here we go. Count us down in three, two, what are your three tips for boosting personal productivity? Okay, this is more like a little three-step process, but here we go. The first thing is to write down your top three goals for the day, but here's a little caveat. They cannot be more than one hour long, each of those goals. They're probably, they could be 10 minutes up to an hour. If it's more than an hour, break that goal down into separate goals. Okay, so just get your top three. Step two is take those three and schedule them on your calendar. Like actually put it on your calendar in between all your meetings and events and your Zooms and your clients, and your hair appointments, put it right there on your calendar. And then step three, during the time when you're working on those, those three top priorities, 
you need to ask, which is essentially means totally focus. Turn off the notifications, put the phone away, turn off the email, and just get it, do it in a completely focused way. All right, good, good. I wrote those down there, great. Oh, thank you so, so much. I really appreciate you coming on. Good stuff. I need some of this. I'm, you. The, I'm like the worst. Oh my gosh. Well, listen, honestly, listen to my podcast. I hope you, you know, it uh, inspires oh. you, motivates. I have over a hundred episodes and I just all I talk about. And it's all for business women, women mm -hmm. business owners. So it would be right up your alley. I'm but, um, but and I'm so sorry. I got so tongue tied in the beginning. I don't know what, and then I don't know what was going on, but thank you. Really, thank you for really being gracious for that. Oh, it's that. really, honestly, I'd be a hypocrite if I was like, <laughs> um, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I will, I'm going to check out your, your yeah. podcast because I could always use help. I'm like a little bit of a, I'm a procrastinator when it's something that I don't want to do. I know. I and, know. Yeah. and then it bites me because then I procrastinate and then it's like eight o'clock at night and I haven't gotten it done. And right. I feel like it stresses me out, like internally, like, oh you know, subconsciously. And I'm just like, oh, I just wish I could teach myself to get this done in the beginning of the day, but I don't because I keep pushing it. I'll get it done later. Yes. I get it done later. Right. Right. So do you calendar it? That thing, the horrible thing? So start there, literally just put the horrible thing on for tomorrow, like pick a time. Cause that's the other thing. I think we just don't, we just don't schedule it. So we're like, oh, I'll do it later. I'll do it later. I'll do it later. Yeah. If it's like something you're seeing it, not that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to do it, but you're more likely to do it. You know, yeah, I'm just going to.